Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be running through a workshop on tuning your instrument with Google Teachable Machine. And by the end of this, um, we're gonna be using Google Teachable Machine to create a machine learning model that'll tell you um, what note your instrument is playing at. So if you're playing an A, but you should be playing a D, um, you will be know, you'll know that. And we'll also create a web app um, to deploy your machine learning model so anyone can use it. Um, let's see if I can share my screen, okay. So yeah, um, a little bit about me. I'm currently a senior at the North Carolina School of Science and Math, and I'm also a Ryden AITA. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be creating this workshop for. Um, I was born in Singapore, but I've lived in North Carolina for 12 years now. Um, uh, in re regards to like computer science and programming, I'm mostly into web dev. Um, so like creating websites for organizations um, and just for fun and also machine learning. So I try to make this workshop um, be at like the intersection of those. So we'll be creating a machine learning model and then we're gonna deploy that machine learning model as a website. Um, outside of school, I guess, um, some things I like to do for fun. Um, I really enjoy swimming. Um, I like biking as well and watching airplanes is cool. That is the wrong slide. Okay, awesome. So outline for today's workshop, we're first gonna be talking a little bit about audio recognition. Um, what is it? Then we're going to be um, actually building our tuning model. Then we're going to be talking a little bit about machine learning, and then we're going to be actually creating our app. So this right here is a demonstration of what the finished app will look like. Um, on the right here, you'll see our website, um, which is also accessible by this URL, I believe. So if I just copy and paste that link into the browser, and um, we'll share these slides with you, so you will be able to play around with this link as well. Um, but um, on my phone right here, uh, you might not be able to see this. Let me turn up my brightness. But right here, we have a D note um, on my phone. So theoretically, my machine learning model should be able to detect that this is a D, right? So let me start this, play this, and you'll see that it is playing a D. Um, just to prove that it works and I'm not messing with you, try B. There we go. That's B. Um, I can also try A. So let me find an A note. Sign up as an experience. After this advertisement, we can try A. Right. So this is going to be a machine learning model that is able to detect um, the notes that you're saying and also background noise, which it's detecting right now, which is correct. Right. So well, let's head back to these slides, uh, present. Um, yeah, so this is our app. It'll tell you whichever note is playing. So you'll know that whether or not um, the note you're playing is actually correct. Um, so yeah, that's one feature. Another feature is you'll notice that when I um, demonstrated that model, I did not have to enter a single line of code, right? So for um, the apps that you're creating, um, you don't want it to be inaccessible to people who or your target audience, right? So in our case, our target audience would be individuals um, without or individuals who are like more like into playing instruments rather than messing with the specific lines of code and trying to get your web app working. So with the click of a button, they're able to detect this and it requires no code. And it's also really easy to expand and add features to our app. So with this information, with this A note that we're detecting, we could maybe say, you're doing a great job, this is correct. Or you might be able to say, you need to play a little bit lower. We have all the data needed to actually do that. And so you can go ahead and add a lot of features to this app. Um, you can maybe even make it into a social app. Um, so you can really essentially do anything with it. And yeah, just as a reminder, the link to this app is right here in the bottom corner. So if you want to go ahead and play around with it. Cool. So um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what audio recognition is as a whole. Um, this is a very big umbrella term, sort of like what machine learning is. So audio recognition in short is whenever a program receives audio as input and interprets that audio to produce some meaningful output. Typically these audio recognition models or programs are built on machine learning models, right? So um, maybe with, the with what I'm saying right now in this workshop, um, an audio recognition model might be able to transfer it into a transcript, right? So whatever I'm saying might be actually uh, written down and that can be done using machine learning. Um, another feature of audio recognition is creating personal assistance, right? So if you have, if you have an iPhone, um, that's what Siri would be using. Or um, if you use Alexa, whenever you say Alexa, um, it'll recognize that you're saying um, her name and it's gonna come alive. 
Um, speaker identification is another big one. So something, uh, it's speaker identification in short is along the lines of what facial recognition is, but using your voice. So identifying people based on um, the way they talk. And also um, an interesting one that I found online when I was doing research about this topic was animal noise classification. So maybe you have a microphone in the middle of the forest, but you don't want to spend all that money and resources to actually install a camera there. So what you can do is you can only install a microphone and collect audio data, which takes up considerably less room than um, image or um, like visual data. And you can actually create a machine learning model to classify those animal noises. So you're able to know which animal it is. And you might be wondering, um, out of everything that we just did, why do we even care about audio recognition, right? After all, everything on this slide could be done by another human. Speech to text, um, my friend can say, can write down what I'm saying by my mind. They can answer my questions like um, Siri or Alexa would. Um, so you might be wondering, why do we do this, right? Um, and the short answer is that while someone might be able to do it once or twice, it's going to be very um, costly and slow in the long run. So um, as with all computer tasks, um, audio recognition is really good at saving time and doing things over and over again. So um, if you read on the slide right here, computers um, are good at making the same decisions repeatedly, while humans are good at making difficult decisions. And largely with audio recognition, it, we are getting into actually that field of like a bit of difficult decisions, um, such as like actually recognizing what I'm saying. Um, so um, this is able to save us a considerably good a bit of time. So maybe instead of like in a meeting, you just click a button and you're able to transcribe all that text instead of having to have someone as a dedicated taker. And in general, it just makes life a lot, a lot easier. So in order to do audio recognition, we're going to need to do what's called machine learning, right? So audio recognition, you can think of it as a subset of machine learning. And as such, audio recognition um, models, such as what we're going to be creating today, is going to follow every single step that um, any machine learning model would go through. So the first thing we're going to do when we're building our model is we're going to actually collect data. And you'll see the form of how we actually collect this data and how we feed this to train our model, which is going to be our next step. So training the model is essentially um, creating the um, mind, I guess you can put it that way. So our model, you can essentially think of it as a brain. Um, we're going to be saying, um, we're going to have this data and we're going to feed it into this brain and we want some meaningful output. And the way we check if we get that meaningful output is by testing our model. And once we're happy with our model's um, results through testing, we're going to go ahead and deploy that model. And that's what we did with our website that I just showed you earlier. So the first step in machine learning is going to be data collection. Um, so with any machine learning model, you're going to, you're going to need data, right? So um, that's why machine learning is often called to be at the intersection of computer science and data science because you do need data and you do need programming ability to do machine learning. And for the um, for data collection in our case, we're going to be using seven YouTube videos as tuning examples. Um, and uh, the notes that we're going to be classifying is A, B, C, D, E, and F. I know there are other notes out there, but um, for just for example today, for simplicity, we're going to keep it to these six. Um, just for an example of what this would look like is if I just click on tuning note A, um, this is what it's going to sound like. I don't know if you can hear it, but yeah, so it's just an example of what the tuning note A should sound like. Um, and we're going to be feeding this audio from each of our um, audio clips into our machine learning model in order to extract data from our model about this, these data clips. So after that, so after we have all these data, we're going to actually feed these um, data clips of these audio recordings into our machine learning model. And we're going to be doing this using something called Google Teachable Machine which has a super friendly web interface where you don't need to actually write a single line of code to train our model, which is really, really neat. So you'll see right here, this is the Google Teachable Machine interface. And we'll be going through this again when we actually build it ourselves. Uh, but you'll see right here that we have to capture a bit of background noise so our model knows what to filter out um, when we're classifying these clips. We'll have a couple of clips for A. So the way we're going to train that is I'm just going to hold up my phone right here for lack of a better method. And I'm going to click the play button and we're going to record using my computer's microphone. And then we also have B notes, and you'll imagine that we also have C, D, E, and F. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and click this train button, and then we're going to actually train our model. So all the training is essentially done behind the scenes, and you won't actually need to worry about it. But if you are interested on knowing what actually does happen behind the scenes, um, this is a bit of the, um, like, in the weeds, if you will, of what's happening. 
Um, so don't worry about if you don't understand fully what's happening on this slide. Um, it's just meant to be a gentle introduction to um, the difficult stuff, I guess, behind machine learning. So essentially, Google Teachable Machine, is, which is what we're going to be using, is built on top of something called Speech Command Recognizer, which is a pre-trained audio recognition model that already recognizes simple words. Right, so it already recognizes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, all the way, such as like down, left, right, stop, yes or no. However, we're not actually going to be needing to use like these simple words. Our target for this model is going to be recognizing um, notes, right? So that's why we're going to need to add our own classes to these to this audio recognition system, which is going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, and the background noise. And as such, or and we're going to do this using Google Teachable Machine, which is no code. And you're going to be able to actually get back a model that you can actually embed into another website or an app. It's pretty cool. So once you've trained your model, uh, the logical next step would be to make sure that your model works as intended, right? Um, and this is usually pretty easy with models such as a text classification model. There's an objective metric on whether or not the thing you're classifying is correct. Um, however, Google Teachable Machine doesn't necessarily provide you with an accuracy metric. And you can imagine it'd be a bit difficult to tell you um, whether or not something is correct, um, just if you think about it, right? So let's say I play an A note for 20 seconds. Maybe for 10 seconds of it, I get A back. And for the next 10 seconds, I get B back. But then I want to keep adding on, right? So maybe for the next 10 seconds, I, I'm playing a C note, and then but it detects as D. So you'll notice that it gets as this adds on, it gets a bit more difficult to calculate what you actually define as accuracy. So what we're going to do to solve this is we have to actually figure out um, by testing it if what we're doing is correct. So when we play A, we have to make sure that our model is outputting A. So it will be a bit subjective. Um, and as this line says, you have to make sure that you're happy with the results that you're getting in order to move on. And then after that, we're going to be actually deploying our model and making our model available for others. So this is um, either for others like the public or other programmers to use. And this can take the form of many options, right? So what we did in this tutorial is what we're going to do is we're going to be actually making a web app or a website for users to use. Additionally, we can actually turn this into an app so people can interact with it on their phones. Or we can turn it into an API endpoint so other programmers can make a um, HTTP request and interact with our code. And um, since we're going to be deploying this as a web app, um, we're going to be deploying our code on GitHub pages. And this is the URL that I pointed out earlier. Cool. So I'm glad you got through that a, lot, a ton of rambling right there. Um, but um, our next couple, our next section is actually going to be building our um, model. Hello, everyone. So um, I'm Ganning. I'm back again with the workshop recording. So. Right here, we're going to be actually building the model that our um, tuning um, web app is going to be built on. So right here, I'm at google.com, and I'm going to be actually running through with y'all how to actually build this step by step. So right here, we're going to go ahead and head to Google Teachable Machine right here. We just Google it. It should be the first thing that pops up. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. And I'm going to go ahead and click Get Started. So. Google Teachable Machine, if you did not catch from the first part, is going to be a almost low to no code solution that allows us to build machine learning models. However, um, that might sound a bit too basic, but don't worry. Um, this is actually going to follow the same machine learning principles that every machine learning model goes through. So we're going to have to deal with data collection, training, validating, and testing, and actually deploying our model. So we're going to go through all four steps. It's just going to be without writing as much code, which is actually um, really nice. So yeah. So right here, once you go ahead and click Get Started in Google Teachable Machine, you should have a couple of options on what you want to do. Um, for me, um, we're going to actually be using Audio Project, but I'll go through a little short run through of all of these. Image Project is going to be um, training item based on your webcam. So if you look at this example right here, it might be whether or not it's just the dog or you and the dog, right? So right here, the machine learning model would be able to predict whether or not um, it's just you in the picture or you and your dog. Right here in the audio model, um, which is what we're going to be using, is actually we're going to be actually tr training our machine learning model to detect what note of instrument we're playing. It was actually pretty neat. After that is also a pose project. So you can actually see um, which poses um, a person is in. So you can check their posture. You can check whether they're doing a squat correctly. 
which is also really cool if you want to um, if you want to integrate like working out fitness with computer science and machine learning as well. Awesome. So from right here, what we're going to do is go ahead and click on audio project, and we'll be taken to this screen right here. This is going to look a bit complicated at first, but I promise it's not. For first, at first, all we're going to do is we're going to be worried about this column right here. We're going to have to record a couple of samples for background noise, which is essentially data collection. Then we're going to go into class two, which is going to be, um, we can actually rename this A. Go ahead and add a class, call it B. Add a class, click on this template, call it C. Add a class, call it D. Add a class, call it E. Add a class, call it F. So we're going to have seven classes in total. And what these seven classes are going to represent are the different outputs of possibilities that a machine learning model would be able to give us. Um, just for an example of what that's going to mean. So maybe we're going to be to that background noise, right? So um, we're going to have to record a couple of samples of data of what the background noise currently sounds like in the room. We're going to do the same for A, B, C, D, and E and F. So with that said, let's go ahead and record a couple of samples for background noise this sample. So I'm go ahead, going to go ahead and click the mic icon, and I'm going to go ahead and be quiet. Um, and it's going to actually record a background noise. Cool. So we have 20 seconds of audio recording recorded for background noise. And you'll see that this says 20 minimum, which means we have the exact minimum, which is absolutely OK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click Extract Sample. Now we have 20 samples of background noise, which is going to be good so that our, our machine learning model is actually going to be able to filter out what noises is the background noise and what note we're actually detecting. So that's um, why we're doing this in the first place. All right. So now let's go ahead and um, we can you can either record 20 more seconds but just for my sake um, and for time's sake i'm going to go ahead and not record 20 more seconds and i'm going to go ahead and go on to a note so i'm going to go ahead and click on sorry scroll down first and then i'm going to click on this a note click mic um, and we're going to go ahead and get ready to record the um, a note and what that will sound like so one way to do this is i have pulled up on my phone i just searched up a tuning note on youtube and i'm going to go ahead and click one of the results that come up this one and notice that if I turn volume up, you can hear an A note sound. So now what I'm going to do is, whoops. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually hold this up to my computer and I'm going to record four seconds of it and we'll see how that goes. Cool. So now we have four seconds of A note. We're going to go ahead and click extract sample. And I'm going to do that again. So let me reset this. Now that we have four more se seconds of it, we're going to go ahead and click Extract again. And now we have eight samples, audio samples, and we have eight minimum, so we're good for A note. And what we're doing right now is actually, we're just, oops. And all we're doing right now is we're actually just telling a machine learning model what each of these notes should sound like in order for it to be able to actually detect it later on. Right? So you're just like a human, um, how human learns. A machine mo learning model isn't magic. You have to give it like practice problems or training data in order for it to understand how to classify future examples. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same for B. I'm going to go ahead and click on mic, and I'm going to find tuning note B on YouTube. So I have tuning note B right here on my phone. You can see that. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on it, click record. And once those four seconds are up, I'm going to go ahead and click extract sample, like we did with A. We're going to record again. And we're going to extract the sample again. And we're going to do the same for tuning note C. And extract sample again. We're going to extract the sample. Now we're going to do D. 
scroll down, hit mic, D. Extract sample, do it again. And then extract sample again. Now we're gonna do E, almost done, promise. Hit mic. Extract sample. One more time. And extract sample. Last note we're going to be doing is F. So let's click mic. Extract sample. And extract sample. Awesome. So now we have all of our samples that are needed. And essentially, this is how we just performed data collection, if you recall on the PowerPoint that we did before. Right, so now we have all of our data that's been collected. And all we need to do now is go ahead and click Train Model. So now Google Teach One Machine is going to take a second, prepare all this data, and it's going to feed it through almost a brain, right? And just like how when you do practice problems, you learn how to do them, Google Teach One Machine is going to train, these, um, train on this data set and figure out um, how to classify this data. And on the right, you'll see that our model is actually being live, and this is how we're now we're in the testing phase, right? So if I just be quiet real quick, we're going to see that this should detect all background noise. And you see, that's pretty cool, right? It did that. Now, if I pull up a note such as I currently have F pulled up, if I just play F, you'll notice that's F, right? Pretty neat. Now, let's go ahead and do, how about B? B was a little weaker at first, but that's okay um, because it got it in the end. Now let's try C. We'll see that C. <laughs> we'll see that C actually gets it pretty good as well. We can try D now. And D is really good. It got it automatically at first. Let's try A. We got A in a second as well. Now let's try E, I believe. We haven't done E yet. Maybe we have. I might have e. And we tried F before. But awesome. So now we have validation that our model actually works, right? Which is super amazing, which means that now we can go ahead and click export model. So now we all we just did in the um, Past 10 minutes, I'll do a quick recap before we export real quick, is we went ahead and collected data from YouTube. And these data links, um, I just searched up tuning note A on YouTube, tuning note B, tuning note C. And I'll include the actual links to these videos in the workshop description as well. And then we went ahead and trained our model. If you want to play around with it further, you can actually head into this advanced tab. And you can play around with this. And you can actually explore what each of this does. But it's not really necessary. As you saw, um, with the default settings, we got really good results in training our actual, in the output of our actual model. Right. Um, so yeah, now what we're going to do is click export and then upload my model. So we're going to have a link that we can use. It's going to take a second to upload. Give it one moment. And now our model is uploaded. So what I can do is I can go ahead and click this copy link, paste it into Google. And you'll notice that our model is right here being previewed for us. So just to prove that it is our model, I can go ahead and play E again. And you'll see how it detects for E, right? Awesome. So the next step in this workshop is actually going to be um, a pretty big part of machine learning, which is actually going to be taking our model and being like, hey, how can we make this usable for the average user? And um, we're going to be doing that using actually uh, by deploying our model on a website um, as a website using GitHub pages. 
And we're going to be making that website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you want to stick around for that, awesome. I'll see you guys in the next section of this workshop. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for staying with us um, for this workshop of tuning your uh, instrument with Google Teachable Machine. In this section of the workshop, we're going to be actually taking the model that we already have, um, which we have right here. If I can just share my screen one second. So if we can just look at the model that we already have right now, and we're going to be actually taking this and making it into a website. So anyone, regardless of coding experience, are able to access this model. OK, you might be wondering that's pretty difficult. But don't worry, don't fret. It's not as difficult as it sounds. So I can just go through these slides real quick. Um, cool. So now we have our trained model, which is right here. And the model URL at the bottom of the screen was my model's URL, if you want to look at that. Um, and now what we're going to be doing is deploying the model and the website. And what we're going to be using is um, to actually build this website, it's going to be three languages. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is, can you can essentially think of as the skeleton of the website, which is essentially where all the content goes, right? This HTML is easily viewable with inspect element, and all the text on a website is actually always gonna be in the HTML. Um, and then if we move on to CSS, the CSS is essentially the mark makeup of the website. So if you think of HTML as a skeleton, the CSS is what's gonna be the makeup or what makes the website look pretty. And this might include changing the background color, the text color and font, font weight, like bold, um, highlight color, rounded corners, hover colors, etc. Anything you can think of to make a website look nice, you can probably do it using CSS. JavaScript is going to be more of the brain of the website. So JavaScript is what makes websites interactive, right? So when you click a button, what is going to happen? That's going to be dictated by JavaScript. In our example specifically, it's going to be um, JavaScript is going to be um, accessing our microphone and detecting audio. And essentially for our um, build outline, what we're first gonna do is create our website files. Then we're gonna export our model to the site. Then we're gonna add a bit more functionality so it doesn't look as plain. And then we're actually gonna deploy our website. And you might be wondering, this might be a bit hard, but it's okay. Everything we'll be doing is gonna be online so you won't have to do any local installations or anything. So we won't have to worry about any of that. And the way we're going to start off with this is let's all head to a site called Replit. Um, it's R-E-P-L-I-T dot C-O-M. And this is how we're actually going to be coding our website. So first thing what we can do is let's go ahead and click on create. Right here, let's search for HTML. So we're going to click on the first one. And for this one, uh, for the name of our site, I'm going to say tuning um, instruments ML, like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and click Create REPL. It's going to take a second. And then you'll see right here, um, I'll just walk you, the, you through the interface of REPL real fast. On the left right here, you're going to, you won't really have to worry about any of these buttons at all. Right here, you're going to have three files in your folder. So right now, we have index.html, which is right here. And this is what I was talking about with the skeleton of the website. Right below that, we have script.js. This is going to be the brain of the website. And then right here, this is style.css, which we can think of as the um, makeup of the website. And right here, if I, when I click run, you'll see that we have our output or the output of our code right here. And just to show you, I can actually open this on a new window. And this is a live website. If anyone who goes to this link will access this Hello World website. Well, actually, maybe you not, might not, because by the time you're watching this workshop, this link will already be populated with my code. So first thing what we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and um, take this code that I'm about to copy and paste onto the screen. Go ahead and take this code. Um, let's first copy this code. Um, so all the way from hello world right here. Let's go ahead and delete that. And then we're going to copy and paste this right there. I will make this code available to you um, probably via a bit.ly link that will show on the screen right now or either in the video's description. So keep on a lookout for that. So paste that into index.html, then head to script.js. Then what we're going to do is copy and paste this code into script.js. So paste that there. And I'm just going to clean this up a tiny bit like that. And now 
when I click run, I'm going to click start. And it should, once to use my microphone, allow. And you'll see that we do get um, everything that was on this page, but on our own website. So just to show you what that looks like, I can play a tuning note. I've done before. Oops, let me disconnect this. I don't know if you can see this, but this is note C. And you'll see that C was the one that was populated just now, right? C right here. Except this website as a whole, to be honest, it's not very pretty. And we can actually change that. But if you are just happy with what this website is, um, as it is, you'll see right here when I open a new tab, anyone can actually do, use this website now. And it was that easy. All the code that I copied and pasted was given by Google Teach Roll Machine, by the way. So all I have to do is if I want to test again, you'll see that the note C is playing. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and head back to our code right here. And then let's add um, the code that we need to make this website look um, nice. So our end goal is gonna be turned to this website that we have on the screen right now to look something like this. Whoops, not like that, but something like this, where when I click start, it's gonna show loading for a second. And then, And right, it'll play that, and it'll show like that. So what we can do is let's go ahead and go back to Teachable Machine. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of CSS code, um, and I will make this available as a link as well, um, because the goal of this workshop isn't to teach you like as much CSS as more of like machine learning. But essentially right here, um, these are all gonna be classes that we can use in our HTML. So go ahead and replace all that, run. You'll see that immediately it looks a little bit better. We changed the, um, we have changed the background color and the width of this. So it's not all the way on the edge. Next, what we can do is we'll head into index.html. And then what we're actually gonna do is let's go ahead and add a couple of classes. So first one, um, let's say, instead so of this div right here, let's just go ahead and create an H1 called tune your instrument with Google Teachable Machine. And then let's also make it super obvious for the user what note is currently playing. So we're gonna say H3, current note, like that. Let's go ahead and say span result, hit tab. And then we're gonna say NA as default, but we will change that as needed. Next, what we're gonna say is create a button. We're gonna call this type is equal to button. Then we're gonna say, give it an ID of start dash button. And we're gonna say start. Lastly, all we're gonna, so that means we can remove this. We can just put all this later at the bottom. And all we have is label container, which is what we need. Now when we run the site, we'll see that our site looks like this. Well, we can also delete this. That right there, actually. Now when we run it, we'll see that it looks like this, which is a lot more similar to where did we have it? Let me pull up the original site real quick, which is a lot more similar to what we have right now, right? That's our old one, that's our old one. So these basically look the exact same now, right? Next thing all we're gonna need to do is go ahead and now really nothing happens when we click start, but now we're gonna need to add that functionality. So now let's go ahead and head to, one second, script.js. And let's go ahead and grab some stuff real quick. So let's go ahead and say const result container equals document get element by ID result. Then we're gonna say const start button is equal to document dot get element by ID start dash button. And you'll notice what we're referencing here is ID result is going to be this right here. So that's how we're gonna be changing this value. And start button is what's gonna be this button right here. So that's how we're accessing it in the JavaScript. So this JavaScript is essentially talking to our HTML file, right? 
So next, let's go ahead and create an event listener, which is essentially what's going to happen um, when an event when something happens, right? So let's say start and dot add event listener. We're going to say click, and then we're going to use this a little bit cryptic syntax, and we're going to say console dot log button was clicked. Button was clicked. Now when we run it, and let's open this in a new tab like this, refresh it. Now let's see what happens when we click this button. Button was clicked, right? Every time I click this button, you'll see this output on the console. Let me just refresh that. Ready? Click. Shows there. Click it again. Shows it was done two times, three times. Pretty neat, right? So now we have a way of interacting with this button in JavaScript. So now what we can say is whenever we click it, we want the start button dot inner HTML to say loading instead of just um, nothing happening. And then we're going to say init. Init is going to be a function that we're calling, and it starts right here, which essentially tells the model to start working. Next, what we're going to add is we're going to add a couple of classes. So what we're going to say is const classes is equal to, make sure you have a map to a. Then we're going to say b, oops, b like that, c, c. D, oops, and keep doing this until background noise. Cool. And this is just what we're going to do for our CSS classes, by the way. This is how we're going to make it look nice. Anyways, now let's scroll down a bit. This is what yours should look like. And let's head to this init function. So once we go ahead and go right here, we have this code right here. Let me minimize this so it's a bit easier to read. Make this larger. So we have something like this. Then we're going to say, um, this looks all right. I'm going to say that. Next thing we're going to say is start button dot display dot style. Oh, sorry, that was backwards. Dot display is equal to none. Cool. Next, what we're going to say is, why is this not liking this? Huh, we don't actually need that, actually. But now what we're going to say is, um, and this all this does is it's going to remove the button from the screen when we click it. Um, so now scores is equal to result.scores, max score. Um, we're going to have, let's go ahead and grab the maximum score. So we're going to say const max score is equal to math.max scores like that. Then we're going to say const max index is equal to scores.index of max score. So we're going to go ahead and grab the class with the most likely probability and its index from this list. Then what we can say is um, indent result container dot class list dot remove Result container dot class list. We're going to go ahead and clear that class list. Then what we can say is result container dot inner HTML is equal to class labels max index plus open parentheses like that plus max score dot two fix. So we're only going to show two decimal places plus close parentheses like that. Oops, that should be a plus sign, not equal sign. Then what we're going to say is result container dot class list dot add. We're going to say classes class labels, let's say max index. So we're going to go ahead and add whichever note we're detecting the highest is the corresponding class right here. And that's going to how we color code it. Then what we can say is um, for i, let i in range, so this code is all right. Um, for i in range, tau node dot score is equal to. So what we can actually say um, right here, um, we can say to fixed. And then 
let, oops, and then let's, after we grab this child node, we can say is current node. Um, we have to declare this. So let current node is equal to label container child nodes i, like that. And then we can say, now we can remove this because it's wordy. Then we can say is current node.inner HTML is equal to class prediction. Then we can say dot style dot background is equal to transparent just to set this up. Then we can say if scored at i is equal to max score, then we can say is current node dot style dot background equals light green. Cool. Let's go ahead and test it. New tab. Let's go ahead and test this note. Oops, I have an advertisement that's playing. Another advertisement on YouTube. <laughs> so we have A, like this. So it is actually detecting C, which is quite a bit weird. Let's try a different one. And let me actually try taking. Um, yeah, so it's detecting background noise correctly. Let's try C. C is being detected correctly. Let's try B. It's actually a bit confused. So it can't figure out if it's C or B. So in these situations, it might be good to actually, um, I'm going to change the input source because when I did record this, um, I was using my computer's microphone and now I'm using my headphones. So it might be a bit weird. So I'm going to go ahead and change this input source quick. Cool. So I think it should be able to detect another input source now. Let's go ahead and click start. Yeah, so this is detecting B correctly. So it is just because of the input source. Training is different. So you see that B detects correctly now? I can try A again just to prove that it was not actually broken. All right. A is there. Now we can try D. There you go. You can feel free to play around with the rest of it, but. I just want to say that the reason why it was not working just now is because I was using my headphones microphone, which is actually different than my computer's microphone when I trained the model on my computer's microphone. So it's important to note that however you train your model, you have to test it in the exact same way. Because if you're training it one way and then testing another way, it's not going to work out as shown when I just did. So yeah, um, well, that was the entire workshop of um, tuning your instrument with Google Teach One Machine. Um, if you are interested in the actual code used behind this website, um, feel free to check out my GitHub, which is shown right here. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you in the next one. Yeah, and I forgot to mention, but this um, website is actually something that you can share with anyone, right? So the reason why we created it on Replit is because they will actually, once you write your code and you click run, this website can be shown to anyone, right? So this URL, if I open it up in a new tab, I access it here. Anyone can access it, right? This model still works as still works as normal if I test it in a second. Um, but yeah, there's absolutely um, no barrier with you sharing this model with your friends, your family, to show them what you created, right? And just to prove that it works. Right, so this is the A note. And yeah, so, um, once again, thank you for watching this workshop and we hope to see you in our future workshops.